Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast, Wednesday edition live. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Y'all know who it is. Y'all know what time it is. It's me, Bruce, the host of the Format. Got my main man, the Transformer. What's good, Transformer? What's good, my boy? Chilling, chilling. And of course, I got my main man, G. G, what's good, man? You. What it is? <laughs> what is what going it is. is? Man, I hear like the Terminator with the shades on, man. Get to the chopper. One of them days, man. One of them Get days. to the chopper. All right, all right. So um, we got a, We got a pretty good show for you here today. Um, definitely going to talk NFL, of course. Middle of the season, or getting to the middle of the season. We're going to do our pick them. We're going to talk the biggest story in the NFL right now is Devonte Adams, and uh, give some thoughts on that. And of course, we are. Um, we're also going to talk as uh, the NBA is right around the corner. We're going to talk some Lakers, and of course, who else? LeBron and Bronny, right? Because well, you just have to. You talk in the NBA, you know what that is, right? But um, before we get to that, you know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you give us that like, that five star review, and drop a comment. All that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. And finally, make sure you write it down, put it in your phone, set an alarm. Do whatever you got to do to remember Saturday nights at 7 p.m. We are live here on the Format Podcast, and we'll give you the opportunity to call in, talk to us, get at me. I love it. I can't. All right, all right. So, um, like I said, we got a we got a pretty good show tonight. Some uh, good topics here, and uh, we got a couple of quick hits that we definitely want to get to uh, before we get started on our uh, main topics. So, um, quick hit number one. I guess I'll uh, go ahead and introduce that and. Uh, Unfortunately, um, we we lost a giant in the world of basketball, um, literally and figuratively. Uh, we found out yesterday. Was it yesterday, fellas? I think it was yesterday. Uh, yeah. The great Dikembe Mutombo, uh, four-time uh, defensive player of the year, second all-time in block shots in league history, and uh, basketball Hall of Famer. Uh, Dikembe Mutombo died at the age of 58 from brain cancer. And, um, well, Mutombo, he was just – he was one of the best to do it, right? He was uh, – one of the dominant defensive bigs in that in that great big man era that we always talk about. Uh, we talk about from pretty much the late 80s through the 90s into the early 2000s. And as you can see, Mutombo, you know, he was known for that signature finger wag. You try to come in the lane, he's going to send that thing out and he's going to he's going to wag the finger on you. And um, I think one of the most the one of the funniest things about that was obviously I think it was before the 1997 All-Star game. Uh, Eastern Conference, he was playing for the Hawks at the time. Eastern Conference was getting taped up in the locker room before the game. And uh, Matumbo said that, you know, he was telling Michael Jordan that Mike had never caught him. He had never dunked on him. And so, uh, you know, he's telling him, nah, you never got me. And Patrick Ewan's like, nah, you never got him, Mike. So, you know, of course, Michael Jordan, you know how he is when he gets a challenge on something, he's going to make it happen. I don't think he got it in that All-Star game, but uh, later in the season, he got him, and when Mike dunked on him, he uh, he gave him the finger wag, say, nah, you tell me I'm not going to do something, I'm going to do it. But um, Matumbo, man, he is one of the best to ever do it. And uh, how he how he actually came to uh, be a basketball player is an interesting story in of itself. He, had, he, he was from the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, and he had came to the States to go to Georgetown to study medicine. He wanted to be a doctor to help his people, and the great John Thompson, God bless the dead, was, um, you know, he was on campus one day. He was still a coach at Georgetown at the time. And uh, he saw Matumbo walking around. He's like, man, who is this guy? Matumbo's like seven foot two, right? So he's like, hey, you know, you play basketball. What are you doing here? Because, you know, uh, John Thompson's like, if he played ball, I wouldn't know who he is. But Matumbo's like, nah, you know, I'm here to study medicine so I can help my people. So John Thompson's basically like, well, let me show you another way you can really help your people. And, you know. Uh, got him onto the basketball team, and Matumbo went on as we, as I mentioned, to have a Hall of Fame NBA career. And uh, he was a great philanthropist. Uh, did a lot of work overseas, especially in Africa. Uh, he has a hospital, I think, there in Kinshasa, in which is the capital of uh, DRC. And um, you know, he has done so much uh, philanthropic work all over the world, but but a lot in Africa. And so 
his loss was really felt. So I'm going to go ahead and, and give it up to Transformer and NG, man. What what type of memories do you all have of uh, Mount Matumbo uh, in terms of, you know, anything, basketball, on the court, off the court, whatever? I mean, you, you pretty much stated the big thing, the finger wave, bro. I mean, yeah. anybody gets a block from the 2000 era up to now. I mean, even mm -hmm. the 90s era up to now. They're going to do that. No, not, not, nothing here. Nothing right, here. right, right. Nothing not here. Man. I mean, <laughs> not today. You know, yeah. the dude was a ruthless, ruthless player, man. Ruthless mm -hmm. big man. I mean, he was one of the pinnacles of being a big uh, eight-time All-Star, uh, two-time All-NBA, third-team, four-time Defensive Player of the Year, two-time mm -hmm. rebounding leader, three-time mm -hmm. blocking leader. Come on, man. I mean, the accolades speak for themselves. How, mm -hmm. how big of a threat he was in the paint, in the interior, an enforcer of what you um what you would call a man i mean from becoming a wanting to become a doctor and becoming a staple in the nba yeah. is, is is something drastic bro Isn't i mean it? who thinks they want to go to study yeah. medicine now you are here making folks go take medicine <laughs> by putting them on the deck Next. in the paint in the, in right. the nba man that's yeah that's that's something huge man we took a huge loss in this world um mm -hmm. you know god bless the dead but uh, he will forever be remembered, man. Forever revered, forever known for, like I said, not in my house, not today. <laughs> Get that out there. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, gee, man, your, your memories, your thoughts on Mount Matumbo. Oh, man. I mean, anytime you, you, you break into the Hall of Fame for blocking shots, right? Like, that's right. That's one of those, those, uh, he's one of those guys, right, that we look back and be like, God, that, like, you know, you always remember growing up, it's like you throw a block party on, on the basketball court. The first thing you do is you wave your finger, man. Mm -hmm. I remember being, you know, middle school, high school, you know, waving the finger because I was known for blocking shots. Right. Um, but I think what's going to happen, uh, his work off the court will probably be one of the things that everybody pushed to the side. Right? Like we know about the Jalen Rose incident. He, he, he told a story about how, you know, uh, Matumbo first hazed him, right? Like he, mm -hmm. he get uh, condoms in the middle of the mm -hmm. night, right? Like mm -hmm. not taking away from his legacy, but you know it was just one of those things that stuck with Jalen to the point where now he's like, yeah, you know, true NBA stories, right? This is what yeah. really yeah. happened, right? But we 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 don't want to um, let that overshadow what he did off the court, man. Like yeah. he was definitely one of those guys, man. I mean, building a building a hospital in, in honor of your mom. I think mm -hmm. they. they they had like 130 rooms in Congo where they didn't have um, mm -hmm. hospitals. And, yeah. you know, it was like a, a, he was a, the, the, the poster child. And, you know, one of the things he I think he he wanted to do more of was, you know, when John Thompson told him, hey, you want to you want to take care of your family. You know, this is how you do it. And you play mm -hmm. ball. However, you give back. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Eradicating polio in Congo and then building that hospital. I mean, mm -hmm. numerous you know, just trying to be a better person and make yeah. things better for your family, man. Like that's and your folks, right? Your, your kin folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just investing the, the, the multiple amount of money that he invested in Congo, man. Like it speaks dividends for what he did on the court, right? That's a yeah. small piece. But once what he was able to accomplish off the court, I think it supersedes his legacy, man. Like he's one of those guys, and, and he should be amplified and or. um Praise, man. Like, job well done, you know? Yeah. Like, um, you invest in education and, you know, water and and, and those things, man. Like, you you, you have to be um, amplified, man. And um, this could easily be a topic in itself, right? Mm -hmm. um, anytime you talk about the things that he did off the court. Man. Um, yeah, man, absolutely. Rest, no. in, peace, rest in peace to a, to a lost art, right? Like, the, the defending against the uh, uh, defending the post, defending the mm -hmm. rim, right? Yeah. Um, he didn't average a lot of points, but his play was um impactful in at, at every game or every team he went to, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think he averaged yeah. uh maybe fourteen or sixteen for his career, which is you know that that's solid. But he was primarily known for being huh? Nine point eight. Is it was one that of, his one of the biggest final points per game average? Yeah. I, I mean, you know, that's his later man. years and when he you know, mm -hmm. played in Houston, he really wasn't putting up that many points. But at the beginning of his career, he was a double he was a double, yeah, double type guy. He was getting like 16, 16 a game, yeah. 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 With, so, uh, with the nuggets, another, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, another point was um, you know, he 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 
he all he said something um in the news about uh Michael Jordan it taking him seven years to dunk on him, right? Like he <laughs> yeah. said, Hey man, it took him seven uh, years to do it, you know. Mm-hmm. But you know, when he did dunk on him, it was like that shit was all over the news. Oh yeah, um, yeah. We just yeah. Couldn't, yeah, couldn't get enough of it, man. So right, right, right. You know, job well done, man. Like mm-hmm. rest in peace. Yeah, man. Mount Matumbo, uh, he, he was special. He definitely was special. Um, and just you know, just being such a, a dominant defender. And it's funny, um, I think I said this before. You said, you know, he was master of a lost art in today's NBA, protecting the paint, protecting the rim. You don't see that much anymore. And I would say uh um <clears throat> excuse me, a much lower level version is kind of Rudy Gobert kind of plays in that mold, uh that mold today. But yeah um it it is pretty much a lost a lost thought you don't you don't see that much anymore so yeah uh definitely um Bad. rest in peace yeah, he, he's he's like the un rudy gobert is like an unseasoned chicken version of uh <laughs> of mount matumbo because i mean the shots that he blocked it he blocked them when they mattered right like game on the line he's stuffing yeah. it you know yeah. so um yeah, man, just just an all around great guy, man, and uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think it was a, it was it was definitely a blessing to to have his skill set, you know, be able to watch that, you know, night on, on you know every night that he played, you knew he was going to throw a block party, man, and so um, mm-hmm. we, we can't we can't talk enough about Matumbo, man. He's one of those no, guys. You can't. Yeah. No, you cannot. Uh, yeah, so um, yeah, rest in peace, Mount Matumbo, and. Uh, yeah, and there you see you see the uh, famous finger wag um, with the Rockets. So, yep, uh, he will he will definitely be missed. Um, you know, all the Georgetown guys are going to be at that funeral, uh, wherever it is. You know, Patrick Ewing and and Alonzo Mourning and Othella Harrington and the rest of them. So, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and so that was that was our, our first uh, quick hit. So let's go to the second quick hit. This one was crazy because. This guy was like a uh, popular culture icon, and we found out he just died as well, and that is uh, John Amos. And for those of you who don't know him, you might be a little younger. Uh, John Amos was famous for playing uh, James Evans Sr. on the TV show Good Times in the 1970s, major hit. Uh, Also famous for uh, playing uh, Kunta Kinte in uh, 1977 in Roots, um, and also, of course, Cleo McDowell in uh, Coming to America, which yes, sir, know, all all time classic <laughs> film there, which is crazy. I, there's there's a lot of young people who've never seen that, and man, classic. that's sad, right? So let let's um, I'm gonna go ahead throw up a a, a quick um, a quick little montage of some of his uh some of those major acting roles there, and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about him, and then I'll I'll tell you kind of where the where the sports connection is on John Amos. I can imagine how you feel, Mister. You ain't got the foggiest idea how I feel. <laughs> what my husband is trying to say is, we don't know what to say. We were expecting, well, someone like, well, what we really want to know is, what the hell is an old man like you doing going on? <laughs> See, my sister, take me from my home and bring me to this place. The only time I get to be free is when I run away. I tell you, Fiddler, sometimes it seems like being alone and being free, you're all the same for a slave. You don't be free. You be dead. Then I be free. Look, me and the McDonald's people, we got this little misunderstanding. Hmm? See, they're McDonald's. I'm McDowell's. Huh? They got the golden arches. Mine is the golden arcs. <laughs> now, see, they got the Big Mac. I got the Big Mick. We both got two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, and onions. But they use a sesame seed bun. My buns have no seeds. So, um, yeah, so we just saw uh, three of his uh, most iconic roles there. Um, again, James Evans Sr. In, in the sitcom Good Times and then uh, Kunta Kinte and followed by uh, Cleo McDowell in Coming to America. So he just passed away at the 
Oh, he was in Let's Do It Again. That's right. Good good stuff, Edward Jackson. You're absolutely right. Um, but yeah, uh, so Cleo McDowell is one of his most uh most well known roles, and that was uh coming to America. Was that like 1988? I think he got his own money. He got his <laughs> right? own money. Classic, classic, <laughs> absolutely. But yeah, so how how this actually has a sports connection? Obviously, he is um he was uh, a major figure in in Africa. In American uh, pop culture, but how this has the sports connection is that uh, a lot of people don't know he played uh, college football at Colorado State University, and okay. also he was uh, briefly signed with the uh, Denver Broncos and the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Um, he didn't play long for either one of them, and then he played for some. Uh, he played some like uh, I want to call it semi-pro ball. It was professional ball, but it was for some lower-level leagues. He played. Uh, he, he played that for a little while and, uh, golden gloves champion boxer. So I didn't know that, but yeah, so that he, right, right. So he definitely was, um, a very athletic guy. He was well ingrained in sports. And then obviously we know that just a, a tremendous actor for was it about 60 years after that, before he uh, finally passed away. So, um, G, I'm gonna start with you, man. What's your thoughts on John Amos? Ah, so outside of coming to, a, uh, coming to, yeah, outside of coming to America, I think the biggest impact he had on the African American family was the role he played in Good Times, right? I think so too. Like he was he was one of those guys who was a staple in his family, right? Mm -hmm. And he even laid down uh, quite a few really good quotes, and I'm I'm just gonna read a few off. Okay. Uh, a man stands on his own two feet, right? That was one of them, right? And and, and you know I, I look at that the importance of just self reliance, right? Like mm -hmm. this is this is what he projected and amplified. And his role as uh, 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 James Evans Sr., right? Um, sometimes the only way you can get through life is to fight, right? The never giving up type mm -hmm. deal, you know? Um, and then the world doesn't owe you anything. You've mm -hmm. got to work for it, mm -hmm. right? It's another another gem, right? So he, he definitely dropped quite a few gems. And then last but not least, the right way, there's a right way and a wrong way and ain't no in-between. Right. <laughs> no right. gray area. No gray area. Right. No gray area, sir. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think these, you know, at that role, he he showed the value and the importance of what it's like to be, you know, the head of your household. Like, remember, we had Bill Cosby on mm -hmm. uh, the Cosby show. Yep. And so, you know, they was too successful. The Cosby show was revolved around two successful parents. But, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, the, 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 the good times, it, it pretty much revolved around. You know, uh, a housewife and a you know a, a, a working class male. You know, head of the household, nonchalant. Hey, listen, um, we not we there is no in between, right? There's right and wrong. There's no in between, and so right. um, I'm thankful for what he gave us on the screen. Um, but and, and and you know what? Uh, hey, rest in peace, man. I'm 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 gonna leave it at that. You know, That's what's I'm gonna up. leave it at that. Transforming what you got, man. I mean, G couldn't, I couldn't follow that up any better. Uh, when you want to talk about fatherhood, right? Coming up as a, as a youngling, you know, I'm a little bit younger than y'all, but even me mm -hmm. watching those type of shows, a tough black father, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I think that that's, that's huge in the households of, you know, how we came up and how we developed as men, because, you know, all you saw was, you know, white TV shows and cartoons, you know, you never, you saw the rich life. You saw how the, the rich folk, get to you know pamper their kids and you know the tough times that they go through and what we consider to be glorious um back in our days <laughs> yeah. and area we're like Shit, well, i'll take that <laughs> you know what i mean if that if that's the least of your issues you worried about a camaro versus an impala you know we we talking about just getting four wheels period back in our household mm -hmm. you know making ends meet and stuff like that but when you're growing up in the projects or anything like that and you you witness how a black father keeps his household together you know, what I mean, I think that, that that's a huge staple in how we develop this men. Um, you know, we don't get a lot of that to, in today's, you know, television to where it's it's nah. the, the tough version. Tough love is, you know, what we consider it nowadays. Mm -hmm. Not to say everything's more pussified, but it's it's pacifier. Exactly you, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's, it's, like it's look, yeah, it's, it's more pacifier these days to where, mm -hmm. you know, everything's funny gimmick. Uh you know, the me too type of era and understanding. And, you know, you got that, that, that black father, that, that tough neck black father that really showed you like, Hey bro, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Times are bad, but times get worse. You know what I mean? But you ultimately keep your family together. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? 
still be that focal point in your household. You do by any means to make sure your family survives. Mm-hmm. If you don't have to eat on that table, then guess what? I made sure my family ate. Um, I did what I had to do. I make I worked them 16, 18 hour shifts or mm-hmm. eight days, came home just to make sure y'all had a roof over your head. And I think that that played a lot in, you know, us growing up and developing, man. So, you know, I, I, like like you said, G made those quotes, but those quotes still stick in, in life today. You don't hear quotes like that. Mm-hmm. You know? But, you know, yeah, G was spot on. I, I, I love what G said, um, you know, and definitely in quoting him. But, you know, huge father figure in the household. I mean, I know we can, you know, make it a sports topic about how, what he did at Colorado State, but we weren't able to see that. You know, you have to do your research. Right, right. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. you didn't have to do research on looking at him in good times, looking at his role in right. roots. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, he got he got um, his own money in coming to America. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 You've seen that. So, mm-hmm. you know, rest in peace to dead again. You know, we lost, we lost another one, man. The, the the Reaper man, he he on he on his he on his business today, right? Right, right. He, he he on it, man. Like, busy man. right now, absolutely. He's busy, nah, bro. Man. He busy. Yeah, now nah, you guys definitely made great points, and it, you know, I just want to reiterate, I love that, especially in good times where, even when even when it was rough, you know, he would do what he had to do, and and the funny thing is on that show, one they showed like you said a nuclear black family, which is beautiful, and then two they ensured that. uh even when he had to do extra, it was always legal, right? He wasn't out there, you know, pimping or selling drugs or none of that nonsense, right? He he had his job at the factory or whatever, and he had his job at the car wash, and, you know, he'd do what he had to do and, yeah. you know, just uh, take care of his family and, like you said, make sure they had a roof over their heads. So it was uh, it was, it was was definitely good to see. Um, You know what? Sherry Golden, uh, you might be new. I haven't seen you here before. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, But, yeah, absolutely, the message of education because – if you remember on good times, um, even though JJ wasn't too bright, you know, he always wanted him to finish school so he could so he could do his artwork. Thelma was always smart, and he always said, uh, Michael, the youngest one, the militant midget, he was always telling me he'd be the next third good marshal, right? Because you know, he wanted to grow up, become a lawyer, etc. So he was always like, Hey, get in your books, get in your books, and you know, uh that that's so respectable. So, you know, he he tried to keep a a respectable, honest family, even though, you know, they were they were struggling, you know, they were in the projects, they were struggling, but they always, uh, they, they set the proper example for a family unit and that, that was good to see. So yeah, um, definitely, uh, rest in peace to, uh, to the great, uh, John Amos. Um, you know, man, we, it, it's funny. We're getting into a time now as, as we're all getting older, we're seeing these guys that, uh, that we grew up with, they are passing away. So it, it almost makes you wonder, like uh, who's going to be the next generation of these type of people. And it's very yeah. interesting because we have just society is very different now. I'm going to leave it at that. So you wonder who's going to be, you know, the next ones, but um, yeah, I guess we'll see. All yeah, right. I, def- I definitely don't watch a lot of um, sitcoms <laughs> nowadays, but I, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's no, you know, nah. uh, Mr. Abbott. Like <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And uh, I'm going to leave I'm going to leave that societal commentary alone because that, uh, <laughs> that could that could go badly for me. So I'm going to let that live. <laughs> shout out, shout live? out to Sherry Golden, though. That's that's family right there. OK, OK. Thank, thanks for support. Absolutely. Sherry, make sure you please hit that that like and subscribe button on YouTube. Make sure you do that and uh, turn on your notifications so that whenever we um, whenever we have new content coming out, you can make sure you check that out. But I appreciate you being here. Um, da, da, da. all right. 